Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back to the Scout Tactical Channel. Tonight we're doing another pack, and this one's pretty cool because this is the first military pack that I've reviewed on the channel for you. This is the USMC, the United States Marine Corps ILBE pack. It also has the assault pack, which is the small pack that goes on the front. So this is their whole ILBE system. Individual load bearing equipment is what ILBE stands for. And that's kind of a misleading term because that can also, most people think of the LBE, they think of the load bearing gear that the soldier themselves or the person themselves are wearing, like the chest rig and stuff like that. But so here it is. Basically, if you're in the Marine Corps, this is your backpack. All right? If you take nothing else from this video, if you don't watch the rest, I want you to understand that this isn't the best pack ever made. Nothing wrong with it. But this pack represents a foundational concept in all of your tag gear, your hunting gear, your camping gear, your preparations, all that, and that is it is adaptable and modular. The cool thing about this pack is that it can do several different jobs, and that's kind of a la military. The military doesn't like a piece of equipment that can only do one thing. Although that does exist, they like stuff that's adaptable because your requirements change. I use hunting for an example. Because more people can relate than a tactical operation. So on hunting, you may be uh, doing a hunt where you, a whitetail hunt where you do it one way. You may be doing a big game uh, elk hunt where you're walking for forever in the in western U.S. something like that. You may be up in Alaska and fighting weather and doing a bear hunt or whatever. So just because it's a hunt doesn't mean it's the same kind of hunt every time. Just because it's a tack operation doesn't mean it's the same kind of tack operation. And just because it's an emergency doesn't mean it's the same emergency every time. So you have to be able to adapt your equipment to whatever you're doing. I think this makes sense, but I want to make sure everyone understands that. The cool thing about this pack is that it's military based, even though it's made by a civilian contractor. And so it's incredibly adaptable. As you can see across the front, most hiking backpacks don't have molly webbing all along it. Don't have load bearing straps and molly all down it. This one does. It's very convertible. You can do some different things. So. All in all, what is this pack? All right, it's a full-size, I'll categorize large backpack. It's full-size, it's 4,500 cubic inch, and if my calculations are correct, that should translate to a 73 point something liter uh, pack if you're using the metric system. And I know we have a lot of overseas viewers. So it's a 73 liter, which is the Vogue term, or a 4,500 cubic inch pack. It is full size. It has the traditional super padded straps with sternum strap. It has the awesome very padded and ventilated back pad. Steel aluminum runners, pardon me, aluminum runners all the way through it to keep it rigid. An extremely padded waist belt with standard type buckle, very adjustable. Matter of fact, I think they say it goes out to a 60 inch waist. That's crazy. I've never seen a soldier with that big a waist. But anyway, it's very adaptable. And the hip belt is removable. You pull this, pull the hip belt off, and you can flip it, which is unique, so that the hip belt can wrap around the pack, and in a load situation where you're stacking a bunch of these up, now the hip belt isn't sitting like this, which it would on most packs. It can flip on the inside. Or you can change this out for different sizes. So, you see the Kelty Eagle 128. Everybody seems to like that pack. But I will admit, I'll be the first to admit, especially on a policeman's salary, that that pack is outrageously expensive. Like I said, I got mine 309 uh, from US Cav, but most of the time they're 450. That's a lot. This pack, how much does it cost? Well, I thought I'd show you a more affordable option. You have a large capacity pack, and I got this on eBay for $80. That's a considerable savings because the military has gone away from this pack. It didn't live very long. After the Alice packs and stuff came the, for the, for the Marine Corps, came the uh, uh, more commercialized packs that were a little more adaptable. The Alice packs hung around for years through Vietnam and all kinds of stuff. So Arcteryx is the pack manufacturer who makes regular old hiking packs, actually really good hiking packs. They're making this for the military, but the problem is something on the strap system for the shoulder straps didn't work with the LBE, the load bearing gear, the load bearing equipment that the military had adopted for its soldiers, the straps on this interfered with the straps on that, on their, basically their vest carrier, their plate carriers, and the military dropped the pack, asked for a new pack. 
And now they have a new pack that's out, and it, it kind of looks like the Kelty. It's made by Eagle Industries, if my research is correct. And uh, again, it's for four hundred dollars. It looks real modular. It looks a lot like the Kelty One Twenty Eight, the Eagle One Twenty Eight. So these packs are on the market now, and they're cool. I like them more than the Alice packs because number one, they're larger capacity, in my opinion. They're a little more mainstream. The Alice pack is fat and squatty. And this is a little more slender. It kind of goes along your body. And it's really modular with the Alice, with the uh, Molly and Pals webbing, versus the Alice system, A L I C E, that the that the old Alice packs used to use. And I have two Alice packs. I do love them, but I like this better. All right, seventy-five dollars, eighty dollars on eBay, and it included the assault pack, and it included the hydration bladder carrier. Now we're talking. This pack is adaptable. As I said, it can hold this 3 liter hydration bladder, which can be carried by itself. It has a whole pack system by itself. Okay. Or it can strap on the assault pack, and the assault pack is the day pack. Or it goes on the big pack. So this is cool now. Your pack doesn't have to take up cubic inches on the inside and carry a water bladder. It can carry a water bladder in this carrier. So now you're talking 80 bucks. And again, I've seen them up to 150 on eBay, but shop around, wait a few days, watch them come and go. Buy them while you can, but this is a neat system. So for this, the day pack, which is 1,500 cubic inches, and the hydration carrier, which holds up to a three liter reservoir, 80 bucks, maybe 100 bucks, depending on the deal you find. Excellent value. Now, the way the water carrier goes on the front, again, everything's adaptable, is it's already built in. You pull this, this pocket becomes loose. All right. You pull out the sleeve. Your carrier goes right in here in this pocket. This goes forward and connects to this buckle, which is already on the pack and it holds it in there. As a side note, if you don't want to run the water carrier, this is also an excellent flap to stuff a big jacket or what have you, and it'll be held securely. It has a strap on the side which goes to this. It has a strap on this side with a buckle that goes to this, if you can see what I'm talking about, so that it holds the top out, it holds the top up. So that's how that works. As I said, pretty well thought out bag. It has a fundamental flaw, and I'll get to that later, but all in all, I gotta give this bag, we'll say, an 8 out of 10. Okay, so you fold this little guy back in here. And this snaps right there. So, good enough for the review. Alright, so the water bladder it goes on or it goes on the assault pack. The assault pack, the theory here is that this is your essential gear that you'll be taking on your specific mission, this is the big pack that you'll be taking to base camp or wherever you're stopping for a while. And then as you're going out on day hunt, right there. Day mission, right there. Survival gear, right there. Whatever. This can come with you. It's 1,500 cubic inches. It has a pocket on the outside and it has a pocket on the inside. It's just that simple. Consequently, it has a divider in here where you can put the water bladder in and you can just do it in your carrier if you wanted to. But you can put the water bladder in and then there is a poke through for your tube. So you can run the water bladder inside of this pack if you want while this pack is strapped on here. Again, this pack has these straps. Two here, two here. Guess what? They go right there and right there. Just like the water bladder would have. See? It's all a system. So you can run this pack on the outside now you have 4,500 cubic inch pack or 73 liters. And if you put this on the, on the outside, which is 1,500 more, you have a 6,000 cubic inch pack, or I believe that comes out to 98 liters. Consequently, on this pack, it does have a hard, not a hard, but a semi-rigid back plate. It's a heavy, stiff foam of some side with a little poly sheet underneath is what it feels like. And it does have a belt, a waistband, pardon me, with a buckle that replaces on the big pack, I noticed, which could be cool if it breaks, but it isn't a padded belt, but how much weight are you really going to have in a 1,500 cubic inch pack? As it all came out, I liked the vendor. He sold me good stuff. 
it still had Iraq dust on it. I had to wash it all off, but no big deal. But this pack, this pack, the assault pack, is in a lot worse shape. You can see by the frayed straps and stuff than the main pack. My main pack actually came in in excellent shape, uh, no real problems to speak of. So you have the pack, it has the convertible thing on the outside. On the side are load bearing lashing straps, four of them, and a big pocket at the bottom. You're probably looking at that pocket thinking, man, that's bigger than a water bottle. And you're right, because it's designed for a mortar. And these strap the mortar around to the side of the pack. But what else can you do with these? Whatever you want. This can strap a rifle on the side, uh, a heavier rifle, maybe a precision rifle, a sniper rifle, something like that. Your hunting rifle. It can strap on a bow if you're a bow hunter, which I am. Uh, and I'm a rifle hunter, but you can take a bow on the side. It has molly webbing, so you can put on the sustainment pouches or the side pouches with all your gear in there. It's pretty convertible. You can actually grow this pack above 6,000 cubic inches because you can put stuff on the molly webbing. It's basically one huge tube. Nothing else. One huge tube. It has a lid that is convertible. The lid, I mean removable, not convertible, pardon me. Can't speak. It has molly webbing on the top. You can put mag pouches up here, which I think is how the Marine Corps designed it. That way you have over your shoulder quick access to magazines. Super huge pulls. You'll see on the whole pack everything is militarized. So the zippers are ridiculously big. The Pools are really huge and rubberized handles, and that's cool. That just adds the durability. It does give it a little more weight, but give me a better zipper, I'll take the weight, no problem. Inside, you'll see four straps take this off. It should be a fifth, but mine came cut. Some Marine didn't like the fifth one, which buckles right there, and uh, my strap just, my, my lid just has four. So the lid has uh, the pouch on the top for the molly, and it has the pouch inside, so you can put a lot of gear in here. Inside, I've just got a pillow and a full-length shooting mat from Midway, just to show you the length on that thing. It'll really take uh, quite a load. As a matter of fact, it'll take an AR broken down. It'll take all kinds of stuff. And there you see the USMC logo sewn into that, which is cool. So it's just one tube all the way down. There is a divider in there. It's a cloth one. That's the uh, same material that comes out. If I didn't mention this, this is that USMC Digital Marpat camo. Marpat, M-A-R-P-A-T. There is an optional radio pouch that kind of buckles in. The buckles are in there, and it goes right about there. And it takes a big military-style radio unit. has the holes for the antenna to come out both sides. So it can take the radio. I don't have the radio pouch, so a lot of these come with them on eBay and Gunbroker, but... Uh, I didn't need it, so I didn't purchase the second one. The fundamental flaw of this is it's one tube, in my opinion. I like the pack. I really do. I forgot to mention it has side zips, in case you're wondering that. Let's see where they are. There's one right there. So there's your, your huge pull, as mentioned, right? Rubberized handle, huge monster zipper. It goes all the way down. You can get your stuff on the side. Over here, lo and behold. Double zippers, you can get your stuff on the side. So you can get in this pack from the side. But my problem is it's one tube, and I don't like that. Because your sleep system, your MSS, modular sleep system, in the military would technically be on the bottom. So if you need to get your sleeping gear, I guess you could get down here and try to pull it all out, but you're going to pull out all your gear, unorganize the rest of your gear. I don't like digging in bags. I like pockets. I like dividers where I can get to what I need to get to, and that's where the Kelty Eagle 128 dominates this pack. This pack's one tube is its only fundamental flaw, in my opinion. Great pack, well made, heavy material, molly webbing, camo, uh, modular, you can put the different pack on it and the water system and everything. Love this guy. But I don't like that, although it does have side zippers, which helps, you gotta dig to get down to your stuff at the bottom. So. Just keep that in mind if that's something you're gonna, if that's something that's gonna bother you. It does bother me. It doesn't bother some guys. I've already talked to some guys about this, and of course, being a military pack, a Marine Corps pack, I think just because it's USMC, some guys love it. The Devil Dogs. So on the top, it not only does it have a strap that goes over that retains your load, but it does have the adjustable collar. You've seen these collars, classable. They're on most of today's modern-day hiking packs. 
with a little tie. Mine's kind of broken. See, no tension on him. It broke. I can put another one on there. That's no big deal. But just understand that sometimes when you get the military gear, it is in good shape, but little bitty things are cracked or broken. One more tidbit of information on this pack. As I said, the hip belt is removable. And it is, which is a good thing because mine came with size small. I had to spend 20 more dollars. There it is, clearly marked S for small. This is a large. I have a 38 waist. I'm six foot tall, 225. I go between 36 and 38 in most cases, and so the small does not fit me at all. This is up to, I think, 28 to 34, and it's not even close. So I went with the large, and the large does, it says 34 to 40 in it. Seems to work just fine for me. These are about $20, just the hip belt on eBay, and I did have to spring for another one. Lo, lo and behold, it did say clearly in the description, cleverly hidden, but clearly in the description, size small. So the guy didn't really do me, but he also didn't make it real clear that I was uh, getting a good deal, maybe because it had a small hip belt on it. All right, all in all, like I said, eight out of 10, great pack, plenty of room. I think of something like this as a great bug out system because again, it's modular. You may have your gear going to your base camp. You may have your get home bag here and your get out bag here, your bug out bag here. So you separate the two systems of the most critical gear that you would need or something you were going out on a hunt with or something you were going out in the woods with versus something that stays back at camp. By the way, on weight, I was going to tell you, of course, the Eagle is 7850 cubic inches, which is quite a bit more. This is 4500 cubic inches. This pack is coming, it looks like about uh, five and three quarters pounds, six pounds. So a good weight so far, and that does not include this, and that does not include this, that is with the large hip belt. And again, no radio pouch. So, you know, a six or seven pound pack, I guess with everything, you're probably looking at seven and a half, eight. Substantially less than the 11 and three quarter pounds that the Kelty Eagle 128 weighs, but $80 versus 450, no brainer, right? Totally simple. All right, guys, that's the review for tonight. I appreciate your views. I ask you to keep going. We've broken well over 100 subscribers now. We're well over 8,000 views. We're two months into the project. Check us out on the web, scouttactical.com. Check us out on Facebook at Scout Tactic. And remember, last week started the Twitter account. It's already gotten some publicity. We got favorited and put on Stag's homepage, Stag Arms, for the designated marksman review. And I was totally pumped about that. They're kind of the first major guy to give a little recognition of what, what I'm trying to do over here. So check it out on Twitter. It's Scout Tactic, S-C-O-U-T-T-A-C-T-I-C. As always, thanks for watching.